Thank you. No. Thank you. Woo. Great to have you here. Thank you for coming. Yeah. That's right. You see what, what happens I, when you make great movies? People wow. love it. And wow. they love you. Wow. And happy birthday to you, you as well. Thank you. It was yesterday, yesterday was your yep. birthday. Yep. Yep. 77? 77, yeah, double seven. What do you do on a 77th birthday? Do you IHOP? Uh, uh, no, uh, no, they, they, they got me and I went to the Getty Museum. I was hanging out with the Etruscans and the Greeks and the Romans. <laughs> nice. It was great. That's there a great was, museum. Yeah, it really yeah. is. And you walked around yeah. there and just walked enjoyed around, it. Walked around the atrium, the whole number. The do people style. flip when they see you? No, it was like like there were there were people leaving, ah. and we got in as they were leaving. Perfect. You know what yes. I mean? And uh, stumbled about, mm -hmm. and I've always wanted to go there. I'm just fascinated. I've been trying to make it to Pompeii, but I haven't been there since 1970. Oh well, it hasn't changed. No, it really hasn't. Still dead. They're still yeah. dead. <laughs> you know, this had more life to it. You know? <laughs> I was there a few years back, and yeah, it's They're pretty much gone. the I same. Think that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you got? Well, you did get a nice gift for your birthday. You've got great reviews for The Irishman, which it's is amazing. I don't know if that's on your radar or not. Yeah. Now this amazing. This movie is based on a book called I Heard You Paint Houses, right. which is a great phrase. Explain what that means. Well, it, we're house painters, but the thing is, it's only one shade. Red. Red, <laughs> yeah. And we also do carpentry. <laughs> and this is a book that is it's a true story, presumably. Yes, yeah, yeah. And how did you, I would imagine you get every single mafia-related book sent to you. They, they, over the past number of years, there have been a few that have been circling about and that sort of thing. But again, this is interesting because it was Eric Roth gave it to Bob De Niro. And uh, De Niro and I have been trying to make a picture again since Casino. Right. It was 1995, so it was a long time since we hadn't worked together. And we tried to find all these other projects, uh, remakes of The Bad and the Beautiful. Remember the, uh, the story about Hollywood and with Kirk Douglas? All that sort of thing. And finally, it came down to a situation where we decided that... Uh, uh, we were going to make a film uh, uh, about an aging hitman, supposedly. And we were working on this one project, but it was kind of a genre piece, and I don't know how to do genre anymore. And the genre that I know goes back to 1948, doesn't, doesn't pay. So the, um, Eric gave him this book, uh, supposedly the uh, memoirs of a, a hitman, so to speak. Yeah. And Bob came to talk to me about the character, and as he was talking about the character, um, he became rather uh, emotional about it. And I said, oh, that's something. Now, if we are going to go back into that milieu, which we were associated with in Casino and Goodfellas, then this is something that maybe we could learn a little more about ourselves uh, and go deeper. You know, otherwise, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. In a sense, we're right. just repeating ourselves. Right. And so we took a chance. And yeah. Steve Zalian came in and wrote the script. The book is by Charles Brandt. And um, uh, by that point, uh, uh, it, 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 by that point, basically, no one would finance the picture. How much do you believe the book? Do you believe the text of the book? I don't, I don't know if it's necessary um, to believe that that actually happened that way mm -hmm. or who did what. You yeah. know? I was interested in how, how it affects the people involved, especially when they're in their 80s and they're alone, ultimately, and they think back in their lives, uh, the choices you make in life, the consequences of a life. Um, uh, so, therefore, uh, in, if, if some of the facts aren't quite right, then it, it really is more about the characters up front, in a way. The rest is just a backdrop. And you could take the gangster milieu and you can make it politics, you can make it uh, uh, business. I think we've actually done yes, that for done real it. in yeah. this country. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the gangster milieu has yeah, become, the, has is become, on CNN every day. Like, yeah, now. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Who said what, when, where? Yeah. Oh, you, you love know. New York mobster stories. Are you going to make one about Trump? <laughs> 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 you, by the way, De Niro is great in the oh, movie. And yeah. he is in, I think, well, like, he is present in 95% of the film. Yeah. He's really yeah. Yeah. in this one. Yeah. And also, this is, and it's so hard to imagine that this is your first time working with Al Pacino. Well, I met Al in 1970. Francis Coppola introduced me to him. And, uh, but then Al um, did Godfather 1, then Godfather 2, and then he's in with Lumet, and he's in with uh, Sidney Pollack, and he's in with all, he was like in the stratosphere. So I was still making films with my friends. Bob and Harvey and a couple of people, you know. So uh, it, we, it was, he was not within my reach any longer, and he started working with De Palma. 
a lot. <laughs> the idea that no one's in, that, that, everyone's in your reach what? is, <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> so what happens is that finally we get together on this project and Bob said, Al will play Jimmy Hoffa. I said, Al's gonna play Jimmy Hoffa. I said, okay. So we met with Al, and this is about nine years ago, and uh, we talked oh, to him about really? it. Wow. Yeah, yeah, talked to him about it. And here's the thing. Um, I never worked with Al before, been dying to work with him. Uh, I asked Bob, what's he like to work with? And Bob gave me so concise and so, and so enlightening, uh, enlightened uh, reaction. He said, he's great, you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I said, but does he, does he, no, no, it's, it's Al, it's Al, it's Al, we're gonna be fine. Okay, so the big thing was that half the picture takes place when they're younger. Mm -hmm. yeah. By the time we got the financing from Netflix, because no one would give us the financing of the picture. Um, so they were your last choice? They were my first choice, oh. because nobody else would. <laughs> <laughs> I said, look, this is a hefty budget because of the CGI effects. We were doing this oh. youth youthification. Right, yeah. And it was an experiment. The whole thing was an experiment. And uh, I, because we could not, there was a certain point after we finished the script, that we could have probably had them play younger, but I waited too long, I did another film, he did another film, and by the time we got around together, we were, they were too old to play young. <laughs> so, and, so we wound up doing this CGI thing, which was really remarkable, it was purely experimental. How does it work? I mean, I, well, I know basically how it works, but you, you, they, do they have to do anything special, the actors, to? No, 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 I mean, everything special was done in the prep. Tons of preparation with ILM and Is it Pablo. only their faces or their, is it their bodies? Is well, there... no, it's the bodies too, you oh. see. That's, that's the issue. We even had a stunt posture man oh. on, on the picture. Oh. Yeah. Like sit up, you know. Sounds like, like the no. worst superhero ever. Posture no, no, man. he's posture man. <laughs> Gary, Gary taken. He was great. I see Gary talking to him, straighten him up. Straighten him. <laughs> really? Well, the, the one thing with Al, I, I, you know, he, the picture starts shooting. And it was a long shoot because the, the, the CGI is complicated. Each camera has three lenses on it. And I was shooting with two cameras. Sometimes we're carrying nine cameras. So uh, it was complicated with a lot of people on the set, that means, and I'm short. Mm -hmm. I can't get to the actors, you know. Okay. What, what are these people doing? That's a, a camera. Okay, so we have Al, uh, the first day of shooting. We're doing a scene where Al is uh, sitting in a chair. His family is with him. He's watching the uh, election results on TV about the Kennedys, and he's really angry at the Kennedys, and he gets up at one point, he goes, we, we're gonna go to war with these people, I can't watch this anymore, and he storms out. And I had two cameras on him, and Rodrigo Prieto is my cameraman, David Webb's my AD, Pablo is there, he's at CGI, and, uh, and Gary. He's the best, and Pablo. Gar yeah, he's in Pablo Hellman. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Gary, Gary, the posture, posture, <laughs> oh, yeah, man. posture Gary. they're all there. And I'm, <laughs> okay, let's shoot, and Al's doing his thing, two cameras, I'm looking at the video, looking at Al, and it was really good. And I said, oh, just, yeah, let's, let's emphasize this bit a little more. Let's do one more take, it's fantastic. He does it again, he gets up, he walks out, you know. I thought it was great, good. I said, let's, you know, Rodrigo, why don't we try to get the wider shot now because the rain, it goes, we can't, we can't get the wider. I said, what, what is it? And they all came up to me, long faces, and they said, uh, Al. I said, what is it? He said, he's, he's supposed to be 49. I said, he's supposed to be, you know, Al's 78. Yeah. <laughs> And he had the little dots on his face and everything, but when he gets up, he's supposed to be 49. Ah. And so I looked at them and I said, you tell him. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's my first day with the neck, 40 years, and I gotta go tell him, hey, you look, you know, come on out. Oh, we need you to spring right, up. Come on, spring up there. So <laughs> they said, all right, I'll tell him. Okay, I'll go, is everything okay? I said, yeah, that's great, you're terrific. I said, the only thing is, you're supposed to be 49. He goes, oh God. Oh, all right, all right, we're gonna try. Gary went in there, get them all set up. Okay, ready? And action, one more time. And uh, we do it, and I look around the guys, and uh, Al looks up and he says, 62. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a fair compromise. We're all started laughing. <laughs> Martin Scorsese is here, the Irishman in this movie. We'll be right back. So. Only three people in the world have one of these. And only one of them is Irish. I have one. Angelo has one. Now you have one. This is beautiful. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say, Russ. It's a... Say it. Can slip it out. See how it looks. 
Feel good? Yeah. You know how strong I made you? You know how strong? You're my kid. That is Joe Pesci and Robert De Niro and Martin Scorsese's The Irishman. Well, it doesn't get any better than that. No, no, he's... How did you get Joe Pesci, who famously retired, who doesn't want to do anything other than play golf? Well, now he denied that he retired. Oh, he's now denied that? Yes. He oh. said he just wasn't working. <laughs> yeah. But he wouldn't... He, he was very, you know... Uh, he became uh, reticent about the whole situation. Bob was calling him, and we had... Uh, we, had, we said, come on, Al's going to be in it, and Bob, and you. And he said, yeah, but it's, again, a gangster thing. We've done it before. He said, no, this is going to be different. But he wouldn't listen, really. And then eventually, eventually, when Netflix came into the picture, he accepted the calls. OK. And he took them seriously. Uh -huh. And I listened about all his concerns and everything else. I said, yes, but you haven't read it yet. And believe me, when you read it, then we could discuss it further, right? He goes, well, I'm going to you know, read it, OK. And eventually, what happened was that we uh, got together. Uh, and he, it's interesting with, with Joe, because in a subject matter like this, in some cases, a little complicated, in some cases, the script is written almost like a, a Zalian wrote the script, of course, but sometimes I layer in voiceover, and it's purely objective. It isn't fully the character's voice yet. Mm -hmm. And I kind of threw him off, I think, because ultimately, he has to, he has to, um, uh, he has to in, uh, in, in just become that role when he has to become that role, but it has to be from the inside. Not like a, uh, Brandt is a wonderful writer, and he's an investigative reporter, too. So there is that essence, a feeling, a feeling of somebody from the outside telling a story. It's yeah. got to come from the inside. Interesting. And he had to find his way through the, his truth, the street truth of that. Um, and I'd say, okay, let's just read this. I don't want to read it. I said, you got to read it, because at some point, you're going to change all the lines anyway. I said, well, first, you got to know. First, you got to know what the hell the scene's about. You know, I'm going to listen to him, because he's a guy who came up with, you know, uh, what do you think, I'm funny? Oh, so I'm not that's, gonna, I'm I gonna mean, tell that's the up. most scariest and most thrilling. I'm going to listen. I was trying to, it took a long, and then we finally got it, and we finally worked on it with um, Steve and Brandt and, uh, and Bob and everybody together. And we even got to a rehearsal a scene where he's fixing the motor, you know? Uh-huh. And uh, we had changed the dialogue four or five times for that scene. And somehow, I don't know how it happened, but we were in rehearsal and uh, with an actual truck. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're doing it in front of the truck. And somehow he's working out with the, he, the, the motor. Uh, De Niro comes back and he goes, uh, he says, thanks a lot, thanks. And uh, he shakes his hand. And De Niro says, uh, you know, he said, what's your name? And De Niro says, uh, you know, Frank Sharon. And there's quiet. Mm -hmm. And Bob goes, uh, what's yours? And Joe just looks at him and says, uh, where are you from? And that was the character. Mm. He had the authority. You knew that he was a man uh, who uh, was very powerful. He said, where are you from? He said, uh, you know, Philadelphia. He said, where are you hang? Such and such a place, a bocce court. But it's not, they don't play bocce there. And then Joe throws in, you, you play bocce? No, I don't. Uh, well, anyway, take care of the motor. It's going to go on you again. It was so natural. Yeah. It's and a that great became scene. the character, yeah. Over a, a truck, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, Ray Romano is great oh, in Ray the movie. Is Isn't he terrific in the movie? And um, uh, this guy is amazing. Jim Norton plays uh, Don oh, Rickles, God, yeah. and and that was a great scene. And I, you know, I knew Don very well, and I feel like if he'd seen that, he would be so mad at you. I he would be that. yes, he'd be furious because he'd be like, why, why? That's me. What? Somebody else is playing me. <laughs> we had to get Don in the film. <laughs> he had to get you know, Don in the film. We had to get him in. And Norton, that's the actual dialogue, based on certain sources, certain books. That's the actual dialogue that night of his act. He said, "I make fun of everyone," you know. And he says, "Italians, and not those Italians." And that's when he, uh, uh, Joey Gallo, pretended to throw the bottle at him. I, I've and heard he said, "Don't him, shoot! Don't shoot!" I've you heard know? him tell that story, and it is exactly as I imagined it, yeah, it would yeah, be yeah. in the film. We had to have him in there. Yeah. Of you know? Well, you did the right thing, <laughs> <laughs> whether he likes it or not. <laughs> well, it's great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. It's always a thrill to have you here. Great. The movie's fantastic. It's called *The Irishman*. It's in theaters now on Netflix, November 27th. Martin Scorsese, everybody, over we'll back. I am Jimmy Kimmel and this is the internet. I made it myself. Hit subscribe if you like it.